evening, knockout enthusiasts, and welcome to another fantastic night of Club Up Combat here at the Park Hotel in Kilmarnock. My name is Josh Kennevin, and I'll be providing your commentary tonight on behalf of TV Ayrshire and Mullen Promotions. And my partner for tonight on commentary is none other than the legendary Mr. Eddie Gemmel. Eddie, we've got some great action in store for us tonight, haven't we? Yeah, we're having a half, and I'm looking forward to it. It's the first time I've been to the park for this one, and it's quite exciting because we've got a seated crowd as well, Josh, yeah, compared to the last time. <laughs> <laughs> so, do we jump in and become seated with them? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got some fantastic matches coming up. 16 bouts and four championship bouts, including Nathan Finney and Taylor Fox for the vacant WK 76 kilogram British title. We have Raheem Ali, no, we have uh, Jack Rylands, my apologies, defending his heavyweight WK district title against Dylan McConnell. We have Cameron Ritchie challenging Jordan Hunter for the WK 67 kilogram district title. And your main event is Dale Cree against Thomas Gren, two absolute monsters going for the vacant 76 kilo Scottish title. We've got a fantastic night ahead of us, so stay tuned and you won't be disappointed. And over to Robert McLaughlin for our first contest. Gentlemen, your first match of the night is about to get underway. Lewis, Lewis Ward against Anne Cranny. Now, uh, Anne Hale's from uh, Newcastle. He's a very tough fighter, and he's going against Ward, who is an air lad fighting out of Jay McIver's gym. An ex Mullen Promotions guy as well. He's 2 and 1. Hopefully, he's hoping to raise that to 3 and 1. He's got a big fall in here tonight, uh, going right in with a, a left. For, I'm trying to come forward. Oh, 
Well, I tried to go in there, but Ksani fighting right back. Exchanging jabs. Very interesting that we have a, a southpaw versus an orthodox in this fight. But Ward's keeping them against the ropes. And now Ward's changing his fighting style, going, orth going orthodox. I find that interesting. Ksani needs to get away from the corner. He keeps taking shots, but he's fighting back now. A couple of shots there. Ksani doing his best to fight back. But Ksani's allowing himself to be vulnerable. He's allowing himself to take shots and stay on the outside. He needs to make advances. But, Ksani, but Ward's going right in. A couple of great shots to the stomach. They try to suss each other out. And, and against the ropes was Cranny. A great advance there from Ward. First half. I would say he was leaning more towards Ward in that one, but of course, Cranny has all the potential to change it around. There's two rounds left, but he needs to make a comeback, he needs to be more aggressive and be less vulnerable. Now we'll get some reaction in the chat here, Ross, Josh. They've got Don McMillan, let's go, Calder and George, Ash Cotton, and Summer Whiteley. Come on, Lewis. So it's picking up already with the, the live chat. It's good to see the fans are enjoying themselves at home. So now, we're going to round two. A jab there from Ward, but Ksani reverses. A shot there from Cranny, but miss, and Ward got right with great combination there. Phenomenal stuff from Ward. He's got Cranny against the corner. Katani's trying to fight back, but Ward's got getting a lot of great shots in there. Brilliant stuff from the young man. Katani getting a jab or two. Ref's almost getting in the way there. But a great shot from Ward. Katani's doing his best to get another back. Exchanging blows, sussing each other out now. Ward with a couple of shots to the head there. Krani on the retreat, staying to the outside. He's just running away now, he's just letting Ward get some shots in on him. He needs to fight back and he needs to be aggressive, but he's not doing that. Just over 30 seconds left on the clock. And Kani's not fighting back. He's just working more great shots than that. Fantastic shots to the, the upper chest and to the head. An overhead there, I think I saw. An overhead shot. And Ward just punching him against the ropes. Just They're locking up now. I think, I think Kani knows he's being beat. But we're now at the end of round two. Oh, some more great shots from Ward right before the bell. This match is definitely in Ward's favour. Kanye still has a chance to turn it around if he can get a lucky knockout on a lucky TKO, but I think the match is too heavily in Ward's favour. What do you think, Eddie? Yeah, it seemed to be gonna going into the, the, the corner of the rings too much. I could hear the coach shouting, come, out, come away for the ring, come away for the ring. But he kept backing up, backing up, backing up. And he's taken into quite a number of punches. That would take, I'd say, Ward's well out again. Yeah, Crowley Cr Cr really needs to be careful this round. He's very clearly on the losing side. So he needs to make a major comeback in this final round. Making a slight... More, slightly more aggressive approach, but retreating again. War time. He told me that uh, 
He told me that Ant Cranny was a forward fighter. He's been some. Lock up again. More great shots from Ward, but the referee's, the referee's telling off. A brilliant overhead shot from, and more great shots right before the bell and a headlock. But the bell's sure to sound any second now. And that's the end of the fight, ladies and gentlemen. But my pick, absolutely loose, Ward. Well, I think it's a, he actually looked tired to me. He looked very tired. And it, you see him in the ring just through there. He looks very tired. The other boy, was just, he was really up for it. Well, Lewis, a brilliant fight. You absolutely dominated him there. Thank you. <laughs> what else is that? Well, your little bro your brother's fighting it later on in the night. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, is, he, is he as good as you are? One million percent, yeah. Easy win for him. Better than me. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Will, will we see a brother versus brother fight in the future? No, never in the life. Never fight with brother. Never. It's family, man. <laughs> Fair enough. What's next for you? Keep my work and go on. And that's it. Nice stuff. Well done, Lewis Ward, ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, a second fight of the night underway, Billy Carr and Robert McGinney. McGinney advancing some great left jabs. Carr try to swing back, but misses. Another great, great swing there from McGinney. What a brilliant jab there from Carr, exchanging more jabs. Carr trying to make an advance, but McGinney dodging out of the way, just absorbing some of the blows. Carr against the ropes, into the corner now. McGinney getting some good shots. Carr making an advance, but not exactly getting anywhere with it. Carr tried to feign him there, but McGinney just fired away. Misses a jab, does Carr. Carr makes a great advance there. Great swing, but misses. Another jab exchange. McGinney shoves him right in the corner with some great stiff punches. Oh, a brilliant exchange there. Carr is really bringing it back. Oh, and a great overhead from McGinney. McGinney getting some light shots there. Well, Carr tried to go underneath. Oh, and McGinney right against the ropes. Great advance from Carr. McGinney with another great shot. Blow to the stomach, blow to the kidneys there, and another shot to the head. Carr tries to stay low, but McGinney's just pounding down on him. More great shots to the head. And that's the end of round one. A fairly balanced first round, I must admit. I thought McGinney was doing the best in the fight, but but Carr was making a great comeback, so I must say it's a pretty balanced first round in this second match. second round of this contest. A couple of jab exchange there. Carr trying to make some jabs, but oh, got one got through there, but McGinney just fired right back, shot to the stomach. A great exchange of blows there. A shot to the head from McGinney. Oh, and a brilliant shot from Carr there. McGinney fighting back. Oh, uh, that was a cheeky shot, he had him in a headlock and then punched him in the, in the kidneys. That's not exactly fair for McGinney. But they're unlocked. Car against the ropes. McGinney making some great shots. But Carr, oh, and a shot to the back there. Car has shown some great resilience in this fight. And they're locked up again. McGinney's coming forward, some good shots. He's very careful, very measured. Carr trying to get some jabs, but McGinney moves back. I feel that Carr is more measured, whereas, well, well McGinney is more measured, whereas Carr is more retaliatory. And misses a shot in the oh, so right, perfectly for McGinney, getting, going in with some great shots there. A perfect opening for McGinney. And they shove apart. Brilliant shots, oh, and, oh and Carr's potentially down there, but no. He seemed to be down, but he's back up. Uh, Carr trying to fight back, trying to get some jabs to the head. Going low is Carr. It's 
exchange some shots, but they miss. McGinn are going to some brilliant shots to the head, but they lock up. They need to break it up now before the referee does. And that's the end of the fight. I'd say it's still very even, but I'd have to wait more in McGinney's favour because he made some brilliant shots, some brilliant advances. Whereas Carr did the same, but a lot of them missed. So he needs to be very careful in this final round to be able to balance that out. Final round, ladies and gentlemen, of this second match. Uh, a jab there from a couple more jabs from, from McGinney, trying to fan him out, but a couple of them connected. A very heavy shot that missed there from McGinney. A brilliant shot there. Carr tried to fight back but misses. Misses again. McGinney's been absolutely dominant in this match. Fantastic shots. Carr's done his best to fight back. Some of them connect and some of them not. But again, as you can see, McGinney careful in his approach. Carr more retaliating rather than fighting. He's just swinging in desperation at some points. More great shots. Tried to fan him out at first, but really started laying it in. Carr's just absorbing the shots. But he's, he's backed against the corner. He needs to get out of there. He needs to fire some shots back, which he, he tried doing there, but Carr blocked him off, shoved him back. A couple of shots. More great shots from McGinney. Carr needs to get away from the outer skirts of the right, needs to get in the centre. But he's not doing that. He's got a couple of shots there from McGinney. Wise move. just absorbing the hits against the ropes. They've locked up, needs to break up our own. Oh, a cheeky shot there from both of them. A very solid fight, very stiff on both parts. But I have to say McKinney has this one. The, the crowd are very into it. Display there, very balanced, but you managed to get the upper hand on a lot of it. 
I just try to control the fight, do my thing, he's a big car, you know, so just try to stay out of range. I've learned from the last fight and, and I've worked on it and I did what I had to do to him. That's what I can ask for myself. Absolutely, because you, you were very measured in your approach where his car was just swinging out of desperation, but you kept it together, you kept your composure. I knew they were coming, I knew they were coming. They're a good boxer, but he's a, he's a better fighter, you know, just fucking swing, you know, sorry. He's a better fighter, but tonight you were better. I boxed him, just done my best in boats as well as I could. Absolutely, you've done absolutely fantastic, well done Thank team. Thank you very much, yeah. Robert McGinney, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Introducing, making his way to the red corner, Keenan We have the red-haired ruffian, Edward McMenemy, again on the show. He had a brilliant trilogy with Hayden Rowe, won, drew and lost to Hayden Rowe uh, throughout last year out of Eastwood. And now he's going against Caden Rose. He's making his debut from Jay McIver, Jim and Ayr. We've got a big follow with him tonight. For his debut, he's actually doing very well against an experienced fighter in Edward McMenemy. Ducking a lot of his hits. Making a good advance there, trying his best. Staying low. Even though Edward has a height advantage. And obviously, Kane's going to be short. He's keeping low. Ducking in and out, making a great advance. They've locked up, they've bro broken apart. Caden get the better of that, of that exchange there, it seems. McMenemy fighting back. Get, connecting in the gut there to McMenemy, does, does Rose. On a shot there from Edward to Caden. Couple of shots connecting to the face there from Edward. Brilliant stuff, fighting back. Trying to bring the fight back in his favour, making a strong advance, but Rose ducks out of the way. Shot to the head there, and another one. A brilliant combination there from, from Rose. 
Ed were moving out of the way while well, he can. A couple of more exchanges. Some good combos in there, trying to get in, but that's the end of the round. I thought the match would be in Rose's favour early on, but McMenemy's managed to bring it back. They're very balanced at the moment. Early advantage from Rose, but now it's evened out by McMenemy. We're awaiting the second round. The coaches are giving advice to the young ones. Both of them have very promising futures by the looks of it in, in the sport. Especially, especially when you consider that Rose is just debuting tonight. McMenemy is more experienced and had a great trilogy, as I mentioned, last year with Hayden Rowe. And we're moments away from round two. underway. A couple of some shots missed there by McMenemy but more shots connected from Rose and now they're scuffling a great brawl in the middle there. Rose making an advance but McMenemy getting out of the way. Both sussing each other out. A couple of good shots to the midsection there from Rose. A great advance from, from Rose, but, Kit, but McMenemy got a great shot to the head. Rose tried to fight back, shots to the midsection while McMenemy goes for the head. Oh, and a great shot, couple of shots to the head from, from Rose. Tries to advance, but McMenemy dodges out of the way. And then if, Try bringing the fight back to the middle. Usually when you're against the ropes, it's a very dangerous place to be, but Rose winning the retreat now. A couple of great exchanges there. And more great shots from Rose. The crowd are really animated for this fight. And I have to, and I, sh I completely agree with him. It's a great fight so far, two fantastic young fighters. Exchanging some great shots. Rose really laying it in hard on McMenemy. Oh, and there goes McMenemy! Right at the bell! That surely has to count in Rose's favour. That's, that goes right against McMenemy points wise. He has to be very careful in this final round not to have another slap up like that because the match is already in Rose's favour before that, not that takedown. But absolutely brilliant stuff, Eddie. What do you have to say? Sorry, Josh, I've been away dealing with uh, the, the fight over there, but what I was, what I was thinking was that. Uh, the young fella on the side there, an, ex an excellent fighter, very fast, very quick, very repetitive, a couple of undercuts and a couple to the body, gave him a bit of fright and they pulled him right back again. I think this round, the young fella this side here, in the red corner, is going to take it. I have to agree with you, but everything can change in the final round. And now we're in the final round of this fight. Oh, a great shot to the face there from Rose. Oh, brilliant heavy shots from both of them. McMenemy trying to get in there, trying to swing the match back in his favour, but 
but Rose just keeps coming back strong. You would think that someone like Rose had been fighting for years. But for, for a debuting talent, he's really good. And some great shots to the head and to the body there from both of them. An uppercut there from Rose. But I don't think it did much damage to McMenemy. Exchanging shots. And a great shot to the slot there from Rose. With many men on the retreat coming back in. He has to be careful about having Rose against the ropes because that's where Rose is the most dangerous. Is when he's back to a corner. And a great swing there from Rose. And they've locked up, they lock up. Broken apart. One more great shot to the head from Rose. Wow, another great advance. I almost thought McMenamin was going to go down there, but he hasn't. He's staying in it. He's staying strong. His shots are starting to miss now. He's starting to get tired out. They're locking up, and that's the end of it, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely, I cannot. I, I have to say that it's Caden Rose taking this one. McMenamin put in a great effort, but this was completely and utterly Rose's night. Congratulations on a victorious debut. For, when, when you look at someone like you, you wouldn't think this is your debut. You look like you've been fighting for years professionally. Oh, cheers, cheers. Ah, uh, the first fight, mate. Well, you've done absolutely fantastically. You're very aggressive. Thank you. Ah, uh, just stuck in. <laughs> uh, my, my, form, my friend and my former co-worker, Connor, who's friends with you, says that you're a, a funny wee cunt, but tonight you were an absolutely brutal wee cunt. I was trying to make folk laugh. Best way, mate. Well, brilliant. Well, congratulations once again. Brilliant fight, brilliant debut. And there you go, Kid and Rose, ladies and gentlemen. I'll have to apologise for my language there. I was quoting someone. <laughs>
Here we are, our fourth fight underway, Kane Howarth and John Brown. Howarth making some very, very aggressive advance there, but not really connecting much. It's getting feigned out there by, <laughs> by John Brown. Exchanging a couple of stiff shots there. Howarth getting some shots there, but Brown managing to protect himself. Getting some more shots in. Brown protecting himself well. Some very stiff shots. But Brown makes some jabs, trying to make a comeback. Howard, a couple of good shots here and there, both high and low. A couple of one twos. And it's very clear who the crowd are behind. Very clearly going for the Mon Promotions own lad against the, the Toon Fighter from Newcastle. Brown trying to go low, but Howard just pounded on top of him. Brown going low again, ducking some good shots there. They've been great if they connected. Ducking again, Howard getting a good shot there. A couple of exchanges. A great hit to the head there from Howarth. Brown trying to feign him out. Oh, the trap up there from Howarth. He needs to be careful. Brown could have took advantage there. More shots to the head, but Brown protects from most of them. That's the end of round one. Fairly even in the opening round, I have to say. Howard did some great advances, but some good protective work from Brown, I must say. from Howard, another great one. Very thun thunderous hits there. Brown trying to make advance, trying to keep Howard against the ropes. A couple of good exchanges there, very rugged. They're locking up. Need to be careful. Brown ducks them all and stays out of the way of those hits there. Some more shots to the head that Brown protects. Great left hand there. 
he's trying to pick out the best moment to go for Brown, but Brown's doing well to protect himself. Very measured in his attack. A couple more shots to the head there. The lights went down for a second. More shots to the head, but Brown's just protecting himself. Crowd try and alley behind the Laws Promotions fighter. But I think Howarth is struggling just now, trying to find an opening to really batter into Brown. But Brown's getting some good moments here. Oh, oh, down goes Brown! Now they must go to a neutral corner first, proper down of the fight. Brown's getting counted out. But the match will continue, that'll count in Howard's favour. Another good, no shot to the head. The crowd rally managed to help Howarth get that lucky shot in there. And that's the end of the fight for, the, for that round, I should say. Brown looks a bit rattled. He needs to be careful now. He's been very good on the defence for most of the fight, but now he really needs to be careful and needs to get some lucky shots in because Howarth is a machine. Very aggressive, but it does miss a lot of the, the hits. But this one's definitely brought, the, that takedown definitely brought things in Howarth's favour. for a final round in this, this clash between John Brown and Kane Howarth. Howarth pounding down, getting some hits there. Brown doing his best to protect himself again, but he keeps ducking. Oh, more shots to the kidneys. Oh, Brown just opened himself up there to a lot of hits to the face. And Howarth is just going right in. He was able to take him down in the last round. He's hoping to try and get that opening again. Oh, another shot to the stomach. Brown trying to advance while protecting himself. Swinging a miss. Brown, how is connected? Brown's just swinging now. I think that takedown in the last round really rattled him. And Howard is just dominating in this round now. But Brown's. Brown's just on his feet, but not really there. Howarth is just taking full advantage of that. Just let, just letting, just letting John Brown be a swing carousel with those fists. Howarth with more great punches. Brown's egging him on there, He's trying to invite him in for more hits, but he's just protecting himself. Get in there, man, fight back. Slight scuffle there. Both connected at the same time. A wild swing there from, from Brown. A couple more. Howarth going for the head again. A couple more one twos. Crowd really showing their love for the hat man. And that's that, ladies and gentlemen. That's the end of the fight, but absolutely. Howarth has won that fight, I'm calling it right now. I'm willing to bet my mortgage on it, even though I don't have one.
Exactly as predicted. Well, 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 there truly is only one Kane Howard. That was an absolutely dominant performance. Uh, fighting three weeks again, I better get fit. Okay, I wasn't fat enough there for sure. Yeah, cause it seemed that we were both getting quite blown up towards the end, but you managed to get him down in the second round, and you seem to be angling for that second take down, but you couldn't quite get it. Uh, I was too slow, too slow moving, but we can work on it. So, because you were way more aggressive, he was way more defensive. No, I know. No, that's just the way I fight. Oh, too tired. Fair enough, but what's next for you? Three weeks. Three weeks? Stuart McComb fighting him. Shot up the fight card, so... You know, try to be fat for that. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll be able to do it. Once again, well done, Hitman. Kane Howard, ladies and gentlemen. That's the man! That's the man! Oh, that's the Hitman! That's the Hitman! That's the Hitman! That's the Hitman! Come on! And that's just a drunk dafty. <laughs> For our fifth fight of the night, it is Aidan Reid and George Davidson. It's 
some great shots to the body there. And great, great exchanges, more hits. Davis is going wild in this one. More great advance, more great connections there from both of them. Advantage, but Ferguson, Davidson just rattling in with the heavy hits, of course. Proving that height isn't always everything, but Reed's getting some good hits. Davidson needs to get away from the ropes. He's trying to fight back, getting some good hits in there, going low, getting right in the stomach there of Reed. Some more shots to the kidneys. A couple of gentle punches to the head, but more harder hits to the stomach from Reed. Right in the corner. Oh, wait. Referees had to stop it there. Oh, I think he may have accidentally hit him somewhere he shouldn't have. Can't be certain. May have just been winded. Oh, referee's called for a timeout. He's gonna. Well, actually, uh, Davidson, sorry, I'm confusing the two. I don't know why. I think. I think it might have just been winding. A uh, winding. Oh, and a great hit to the head there. Great exchanges. Again, he's against the ropes, but. Shot to the kidneys. Last end of the round. Davidson was. What, I don't know what happened to Davidson in that in that uh, stoppage. I think it was, it was either winded or he got hit somewhere that he shouldn't have been. I think completely by accident from from Reed. But nonetheless, a brilliant first round. Both of them showing some great aggression. It's kind of hard to pick who's in the lead at the moment, as it's fairly fairly balanced. Some great swings in there. Reed against the ropes. Great shots to the stomach and the head. Davidson's firing right back. Brilliant stuff. Then the headlock. I have to break it up. And coming right back at it. Reed trying his best to get some hits there. And a great advance from Reed again. Davidson against the corner. Davidson against the road, just absorbing all the hits. Reed firing right in. Brilliant shots to the head, but referee's pausing the match. Counting out. Oh, Davidson's called it. He's called it. He's thrown in the towel. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. A second round surrender in favour of Aidan Reed. Davidson knew he was beat, and the, his coaches did the absolute right thing of throwing in the towel. Absolutely no shame in, in knowing you were out of your depth. 
And Davidson's quite upset now, but, but there is absolutely no shame. Absolutely no shame. The crowd are really behind him now. Fantastic fight. Both of you were really hitting in hard at each other, but I'm not sure if uh, throwing in the towel is exactly how you wanted to win. Uh, I'm, I'm not complaining, as long as I win. Fair enough, but what was the, what was the stoppage about? There was a stoppage in the first round. What, what happened there? I, I hit him low. It wasn't that hard, but I hit him low. Well, that's my bad. But he was able to continue, and I won't get the score. Well, you done absolutely brilliantly. What's next for you? Uh, hopefully I come back. I'll do it all again. I'll do it again. Good stuff. Well, well done to you. Best of luck for your future. Aidan Reed, ladies and gentlemen. That was Aidan Reed in his debut, no less, destroying a fantastic young fighter in George Ferguson who unfortunately he knew he was out of his depth which in the towel was thrown in which goes to show just how much of a future Aiden Reed has in the sport of professional boxing absolutely fantastic display from, from, from both young men I must admit <laughs> Oh, 
Brendan Noble is undefeated in competition, hailing from Fraserburgh. Aaron Ferguson home to give him his first defeat, fighting out of Mom Promotion's own gym. The match is underway. Oh, a couple of swings from Noble, but, but he misses, and Ferguson got some good hits there. Shot right to the face, but, but Noble now on the aggressive. Getting Ferguson against the ropes. Ferguson trying to get back, but Noble moving out of the way. A couple of straight jabs. Oh, and down goes Noble for a hook to the head there. For Ferguson forgetting he had to go to a neutral corner. Noble's good to go. Ferguson is very careful. Noble going low there. A couple of good exchanges there. Swing, both of them swinging and missing. But they were, if they connected, they'd have been great shots. But Ferguson again against the corner, against the ropes. A brilliant swing from both of them there. But Ferguson is really on the aggressive. They're sussing each other out. Ferguson misses. Noble going in some great shots from to, to the stomach and to the head. Ferguson swinging but missing. Noble some good shots there. Oh, and bouncing right back to a couple of good hits. That referee's warning him, be careful. Noble making a couple more advances. Ferguson doing his best to avoid them, but some of them are connecting. And that's the end of round one. You wouldn't think, uh, because of how aggressive Noble was in that round, that he'd got taken down for a brief moment by Ferguson. He made a great comeback, managed to bring things back up a little bit to a more balanced, uh, a more balanced round. But I still have to give a slight advantage to Ferguson because of that takedown. Noble's still a very strong fighter. He's very aggressive, doing his best to keep that undefeated streak going. But Ferguson, with that first round takedown, I think we have a contender to put a one in the L column for Noble. But now we're seconds away from round two. We're getting ready. The referee's about to call it. And round two is underway. Ferguson going high for some reason. Noble going low. Both try to feed each other out. A couple of advances, but they keep they both miss. Noble try to go low with a wild swing there as well, but Ferguson manages to dodge some of it. Noble with more advances. Oh, and some more great shots from Ferguson right to the head. Noble doing his best to dodge them. But Ferguson against the corner, they're both strapping with each other now. Ferguson, some great hits to the head. Now they're both hitting each other in the head. Ferguson's going all out with the aggression. He's been very careful. Oh, down they both go. Bit of a trip up from both of them. Referee resumes the fight. A wild swing there to Ferguson's head. A couple more shots, but the bell has run for the end. Of about to go on their way. Noble has a lot of work to do to bring this back. 
Now we're underway. No more. A couple of advances there. Try to be, try to assert aggressiveness. Ferguson tries to get some heavy hits in there, but Noble making a great advance. Ferguson shooting them backwards. Exchanging some great blows there. Ferguson against the ropes. He needs to get away from there. Some great body shots from Noble, I must admit. Both exchanging great blows. A wild kick to the head there from Ferguson. A couple of swings and misses from both of them. More great body shots, but Ferguson fighting back. I think you'll notice that Noble aims low, whereas Ferguson aims high for most of the fight, as far as I can make. Both of them exchanging blows, just hitting at the same time, really. Ferguson a good duck. A couple of misses. Noble has Ferguson in the corner again, some great shots, but Noble tripping again. More shots to the head from Ferguson. Noble against the ropes. Noble needs to be careful. He's really on the cusp of losing this. But Ferguson making great, a great advance. They've locked up. And they're able to break up before the ref does. Got quite tired towards the end there, uh, just swinging for the fences. But quite a dominant display there from both of them, but I must give the match to Ferguson, I think. I think Ferguson has this one. Conquered. Unfortunate, folks. I thought we were going to get an interview with our winner there, Aaron Ferguson, but don't think he was in the mood for talking.
Round one's about to get underway in this contest of the heavy hitters. Uh, McDonald certainly has the crowd behind him. And McDonald going right in there. <laughs> Best seen on the outside. Oh, trying to protect himself, but he got a jab to his face right there. McDonald just has him against the He's McDonald's definitely the dominant one in this fight. Best is just on the defensive. Not really getting any hits and they've locked up. He needs to bring that up. That's but Best is one of the many Newcastle fighters here tonight. He's not exactly doing a good job in this opening round. McDonald's just slaughtering him right now. Great advance there from McDonald, getting him against the corner, some good hits, just keeping him down. What is what is Best doing? Three, five, is it over before the round match show really begins? The ref allows it to continue. Best is really out of his depth and down goes. Best is almost down again. Taking another breather. Best is clearly out of his depth right now. Is Best not getting back up? No, Best is out. Best is, Best is gone. That, that is a shocking first round defeat there. Ladies and gentlemen, you're winner by surrender. Almost, pretty much. It was William McDonald.
Levi Best did his best, but it clearly wasn't. He could have. That was an absolute murdering. Cheers, my boy. Cheers, mate. I fucking thumb what I could do. He was completely out of his depth, but but he, uh, but he just did not relent at all. No, mate. Just train for it, man. Showed up. Done what I could. Put the result in it. Just like I say, the fact that they showed up, they bought tickets. Appreciate having shown up tonight. Absolutely, no doubt. But once again, congratulations. Absolute display of dominance from William McDonald there. Fantastic stuff. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, bout number eight, welcoming and introducing, making his way to the blue corner, Cairn Lynch.
Both men keeping their shirts on for this fight. And they're both, oh, wild starting there to the match. Both swinging for the fences. A great clobbering action there from both young men. Some wild hits from Lynch and Ward there. Ward is just as aggressive as his brother Lewis, who fought, in, who fought earlier in the night in the opening, opening contest. But Ward shows some great aggression. Lynch doing his best to stay in it. But they've, they've, they've locked up in a little hug. Needs to break it apart. Good thing they've done it before the ref did. Lynch swinging, but Ward managing to duck them. But more hits against the ropes from Lynch. Lynch on the aggressive. Ward just swinging. Ward trying to weave in and out there, but trying to go low, but Lynch just almost fade him in there. Some more great hits from Lynch there. He's locked up in the corner. Oh, some wild swings, some hits and misses from both of them. They've locked up again. Some fantastic hits from Lynch. Really bringing that wish or ruggedness to the air, lad. He certainly, Ward certainly has a following tonight, as did his brother. And that's the end of round one. A brilliant display in the first round from both of them. Absolutely brutal. underway and again a brilliant opening scuffle both of them just clobber each other a great brawling action here in this fight both of them kind of lock it up there but <laughs> call it an elbow action just with some extra fists added in Ward with a great swing there oh, the referee's pausing it a second they're back at it bit of a warning to both of them Ward against the corner, fighting back as best as he can. Both of them getting some good hits. Ward needs to get away from the ropes. He's been there most of the fight. Lynch has done his best to, to stay on top. Fairly balanced, I must say. They've both been absolutely brilliant. It's kind of hard to call, but Ward being against the ropes so often isn't really helping him. And again, Ward in the corner, absorbing hats from Lynch. They've locked up again. They need, they need to break up. Oh, no. Oh, a little bit of a cheap shot there from Lynch. Needs to be careful. 
but Lynch just overpowering Ward on a lot of it. They're locking up again, getting some good hits in, both of them. But I think Ward may be starting to tie it out. Got a good shot to, to the header to Lynch, but they're locking up again. Ward, again, he's allowing himself to get trapped in the corner. He cannot allow this. He needs to assert a more dominant position. And that's the end of round two. I think Ward was shaking his head a little bit there. His coach slapping him in the face to try and wake him up a bit. But, but Ward was way too forgiving. He was letting a lot of the shots come in from Lynch. Lynch being absolutely unrelenting. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was voted in Lynch's favour. I would be nice to say it's somewhat even and almost a draw, but Lynch is certainly getting the upper hand in, from that round. Ward still has the ability to try and balance things out. And hopefully that wake-up slap from his coach is hopefully going to wake him up a bit and get him back in the game. Round three is now underway. Lynch with an advance. Trying to get an early upper hand. Ward again against the corner. He's staying away from there and he's getting absolutely riled by Lynch. Both of them They've locked up again. They're going to have to break it up. I don't know if that's a ward defence tactic or not, but... But Lynch is just clearly on top. Just piling on with heavy hits. Oh, the referee's stopping the fight for a second. I think something's to his glove, but... The fight's underway once again. Ward did his best to fight back, try, try to reclaim it, but it's clear that Ward's way too bloated. He's blowing up. Lynch has preserved his stamina, even though he's been quite aggressive for the most part. He's doing really well. Ward's managed to stay in it, but... Lynch is clearly on top. Trying to feign him there, but... but Ward has to get a, a lucky shot to the head there, but it wasn't much. And oh, brilliant, brilliant swing from Lynch. Ward's still on his feet, but he's out of it. He's, he's, he's not winning this, and Lynch is just pounding on. Quite an upset, I think. And a lot of fans have come here tonight to support the Ward brothers and and Lynch, this rugged boulder from, from Wishaw is just he's not something a wild swing, but Ward was able to miss it there. They've locked up again. They need to break that apart. Ward knows he's done, but the coaches are egging him on to get into it. But but Lynch is just not stopping. They've locked up again. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, but I think Lynch has got this. Absolutely, Ken Lynch is winning this.
Alan, you destroyed the brothers' chances of having a clean sweep tonight. An absolutely dominating performance tonight. Thank you. Um, my knee's done. I lost it in the first round. But I knew I was catching up the shots. So I had to just keep following up. Put him in the corner and didn't want any of it. Well, he was, he was clearly tired out towards the end. You, were, you just did not stop. You're constantly on top of him. Um, I walked in my cardio a lot this camp and made sure I was fit. Uh, I knew he was bigger than me and he was older than me, but I had full confidence in myself and I knew I could be thrown like this. Absolutely, because you, you've certainly caused an upset tonight because the air lads have certainly had a fallen behind him, but you've come right in and just run right over him. You know what they say, they love an underdog and I'll always be the underdog and I'll always show them that I can fight and I'll work as hard as I can until they know that. Absolutely, but well done once again, Karen. Fantastic fight. Karen Lynch, ladies and gentlemen. time for a supplementary fight. This one was announced last second with uh, Matt Strike and James Cameron having to pull out. A fight between Fraser Tiger and Reese Flott. Currently three and three, hoping to make it four and three against Flot. <laughs> the match begins. Flot, Flot tries to get in there, but Taggart with great aggression. What a phenomenal display early on from Tiger. Fought trying his best to regain his equilibrium there. Trying to make it a, another advance. Trying to get back into it. But Tiger is just not letting up. He's just going straight in. Not all the hits connecting, but he's making an advance nonetheless. And it's making the flock retreat. Tiger's 
a low there, but thought went high. Now they're sussing each other out. A faint approach there from Tiger, but nonetheless, getting flat against the ropes, switching bait there. Couple of good hits from both of them, but they still try to pull each other in. A couple of swings and misses from Flora. Great couple of shots to the head. Flora almost going over the top rope there. This is a boxing ring, not a wrestling ring. It's, a, it's not a battle royal. But he's getting back into the scuffle of it. The Tiger again advancing, getting more shots in. A couple of great swings there. Floss just smiling at him, but I think there's a shot to the back of the head there. Tiger ducking and getting a good few hits in there. That's the end of round one. I'd say the match is currently in Taggart's favour. He's done brilliantly, some brilliant aggressive work early on. Flott's just flaunting about, so to speak. to about to get underway. And here we go, round two. And again, a repeat of the opening, opening rounds. Flop makes an advance, but Tiger just fires right back. Tiger being very careful, managing the range of shots from me. And just piling after Flop here. Flop's just... I don't think Flott's taking this fight too seriously. He's, he's just letting Taggart wail on him. Ducks a jab and a great shot to the kidneys from Taggart. And they've locked up a bit there. Taggart getting some shots in the, the midsection. A shot to the shoulder there. To Taggart making another advance. Great shots to the head there, just not letting up. Just wheeling in. Now he's going a bit to lower part. Now he's going for the head again. Getting some good hits and Floss not doing his, his best defensive work, but he's still in it. Flott against the corner again. Tiger just getting some good shots to the stomach. Once again, they're circling each other. Flott going too high there. Tiger just pounding in now. Sends a few shots, but Tiger more more hits more. Flott's trying his best to make a slight comeback. And that's the second round. What do you think so far, Eddie? I think I've got a good fight there. I'm just looking at some of the, the footage there. There's a, some really good jabs to the face. A couple of hits to the head, see them here. A couple of hits to the head, back to the bottom. 
thought you actually went down at one point when he went over to the far end of the, the ring there to one of the punches. The punches are pretty heavy. I heard you make a comment about one of the guys, kind of as if he was just strolling around about the ring, as if he's just relaxed and not bothered about the fight. He's been a bit cocky. Aye, a wee bit dummy. And I think he's paid the, he's paid the price for that. That's quite a few punches he took there because he was kind of lackadaisical. So for me, it does look as though it's a... Taggart's favour. Taggart's favour, yeah. Absolutely, I have to agree with you there. Contest between Tagger and Flott. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after a three rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. We have a unanimous decision in favour of your winner. In the red corner, Peter Tiger. Ladies and gentlemen, please also show your appreciation for Reese Glock.
I've just kept all this in my coaches. Sometimes I get a bit carried away. I forget what they say. But I just kept that in my head the whole time. That's all I can. But Flock got, Flock got a bit cocky early on. But uh, he, he, he said he said made the price for him. I thought that was what was going to happen. He was up the stairs. Same story. Cocky. But no, I owe everything to my coaches. This, this one was for them. You know what, what I said? I had to get one in the road. I came, made sure I got it. But the amount of effort these coaches are putting with me at rivals is unbelievable. So I said, at least I could do for them. Also, my wife and my son, they need to put up with me during camp. It's never easy. And I owe them everything. I'm sure you've done your family play, but once again, Fraser Tiger, ladies and gentlemen, well done Thank to you. Thank you very much. Thank His opponent was the name on my left in the red collar, wearing the green coat with white, boxing out of combat sentry. Well, here we are with a featherweight contest between Ryan McCaskill and Xander Coyle. <laughs> Xander getting a, bit, a couple of boos from the crowd there. Uh, McCaskill getting a lot of cheers. <laughs> the match is underway. Some decent exchange from both of them. They're both locked up a bit, but now. They're both ducking and weaving each other's shots. They're doing great action here. Both of them very slight, getting some good shots in the midsection and to the heads. None of them doing much damage, but they're connecting to some extent. <laughs> They're both locked up a bit. Need to be careful. Castle manages to get on top, getting coil against the ropes. They've locked up again. A couple of comebacks. Both, both locked up again. They're both kind of suss each other out of that. Referee separates it.
Hawkins and Coyle in the corner. McCaskill doing some great job, a great job there trying to assert his dominance, trying to maintain the upper position, but they're locked up. The breakout Coyle for a good shot there. They've locked up again. You need to break that off. A couple of straight shots. And that's the first belt. Somewhat split, I must say. It's hard to pick which side is currently winning. It's kind of hard to follow the action when they're so quick like that. firing right into each other in the second round. <laughs> now Coyle's... A, the, the both getting some good hot shots there. Coyle was almost in danger against the ropes there. But the castle's just dodging all of his shots. They've locked up again. Coyle connecting with a few shots there. The castle's not... A couple of light taps. Coyle ducking and weaving, getting some more shots in there. Both of them exchanging a few blows. Managing to move out of the way for some of them. They've logged up again. The castle against the corner, but he's broke out against the ropes again, but. Coyle now against the ropes have locked up. I think this lock up thing is a bit of a defense technique from Coyle, but it's not working. A couple of shots there from both of them. The Casco trying to make, make an advance. Hmm. A couple of, an uppercut there from Coyle, good uppercut there. A jab from McCaskill. Both of them try again for the midsection, try to keep it low. A couple of uppercuts. But they've locked up again. This needs to stop. A couple of wild punches there from McCaskill. They've locked up again. Coyle needs to stop doing this. He needs to stop hugging his opponents because it's not allowing a fair fight. McCaskill, every time McCaskill tries to make an advance and tries to get an upper hand, Coyle just hugs him. And Co Coyle shoves him off, a couple of wide punches from McCaskill, and that's the end of round two. I have to say McCaskill has this. But things can still change in the final rounds. Right, sorry Joyce, I've not been around, but I love watching the featherweights. The featherweights are great, they put so much energy into the, the ring. It's very, very difficult to sit down and say who's who, who's actually fighting the best because both put so much into the fight. The energy and the automatic and the, the quick punches is very hard to count. But certainly I think I see you on the live chat there we're getting the, some fans for Magasco. So it looks as though it, Magasco for me anyway so far and obviously for the fans out there at Cardano College to give you a wee shout. It, so I'm we'll just gonna just get asked about a live fight there. But what I was saying is Bagasco certainly is the person for that one. Okay Josh. Well round three is just about to get underway. Round three. Round three, here we go. Well, referee. Uh, oh Bagasco getting some good shots there, they're both firing right at each other, but again they've locked up. And Coyle fighting, but McCaskill's gone almost out of the ring there. Need to be careful. 
McCaskill was making a great comeback. Hoyle seemed, managed to get on top for a bit, but McCaskill came firing right back. Coyle against the corner, absorbing some shots from McCaskill there. They've locked up again. With Coyle getting some shots to the head, McCaskill firing back with some of his own. But they've locked up. Coyle needs to get away from the ropes. McCaskill's trying to get a few shots in, but a bit of a failed advance there from, from McCaskill. And again, they're locking up. This is not a hugging contest, it's a boxing contest. Please remember that, boys. But they're both exchanging kidney shots in this lock up against the ropes. The referee should be. Be a bit careful here. They're both just exchanging light punches. Referee's now officially breaking the off. They're turning to the middle of the ring. Fans are getting quite animated in this one. Coyle went a bit too low there. A shot to the head from Coyle. Again, Coyle against the ropes. Referee slightly worn there, but shots to the back of the head. Couple of, they're locking up again. It's hard to call the action when they both keep hugging each other. But McCaskill's trying to get a few punches into his, his stomach. The fans are really getting behind it now. They're really getting animated. And that's the end. But now we need to wait the judges' decision. I'm not supposed to cheer for my hometown lads in Ryan McCaskill, but you absolutely dominated them in that thank one. Thank you, mate, thank you. Yeah, I took this fight in four days' notice. So, just fucking buzzing, mate, aye. Well, it, it, was, it was quite even, but you kept walking up in, a, in, in hugs. I got tired the third round, my corner tell me I'd already get the first two, so maybe cosied that a bit, but fuck it, I got to win, did I? Fair enough, the, the crowd seems to be a bit against you in the beginning. I'm happy anyway, so fuck it. Fair enough, well
Americans. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a treasury contest. Schedule for three tuner rounds. Welcoming and introducing on my right in the blue corner. Wearing the white and blue. Boxing out of rock, the boxing palm, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for her. Johnny Downey. Now, our final fight before the, an intermission between one of Mall Promotion's own and Downey from Fraserburgh. Some great aggression early on from both of them. They've locked up a bit. But Fraser's currently 8-8 eight and eight in his professional record. Downey getting some good hits. A wild advance there from Downey and Fruz just thrown and missing. And Downey making a good advance. They've locked up. The referee will need to break it apart in a second, but they do it on their own. Downey with another great advance. Oh, and down goes Downey. The referee's counting it. He's out in his feet, I think, but he's insistent. No, he's counting him down. He's out. He's out. First round TKO. That, that is an absolute shocker. That's twice in one night we've had a first round defeat like that. First round knockout! Fucking brilliant, absolutely. Watch so my language, you won't lie to you. <laughs> hey, absolutely brilliant. It's been a long seven months, but we're in there, we're going to jump. Ball's rolling. Let's go over there, let's see what happens now. Absolutely, that's probably in contention with McDonald's best for quickest match of the night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't see any other fights, I was too busy pacing up and down the hole there. <laughs> and my tunes in, so I was not cared whatsoever. He's trying to get back up there, done the job. Fair play to the boy. He gave that a go. He just could no, no, no shame in trying. No, he can call it just what he wants. Absolutely. But, <laughs> but you're 9 and 8 now. What's next? 
see what happens. I'm fighting again next week. Uh, but big one next up. Uh, Next round to my Sunday League team two in town. Semi final of Western Scotland tomorrow. I'm in the start lineup. Well said this year, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> well, well done, Arthur. Well done, big. That's the big shoe for you, Arthur Frew, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to a short break now, but don't go anywhere. We've got more championship action after this break. See you soon.
and they got quite a warm welcome there from the, the Kelly crowd. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow combat <laughs> knockout enthusiasts. This is a championship match for the WK76 kilo British title, which is currently vacant. This is a rematch from the race course. They're both back to their natural weight. And Fox going right in. With a couple of great hits there in the opening from Fox. Finish that compose himself, got a few hits there. Fox needs to get away from the corner. Finney going a bit low, trying to duck a few shots, got a shot there. A couple of jabs going straight through. Finney's backed against the ropes, he's trying to duck and dodge. Doing well to do it against the ropes again. again. And then locked up against the ropes again. Finney against the ropes, absorbing a few heavy hits there from, from Fox. Fox fighting back, back in the Finney trying to get a few, a few jabs in here and there. Shot to the stomach. The Fox defend himself. Finney just moving away with a couple of heavy hits there from Fox. And another stiff one. Some stiff shots from Fox. Really wheeling in on Finney. Who's looking to add another championship to his belt collection. Oh, oh and Finney goes down. Wait a minute here. Could this be over in the first round? The referee allows it to continue. But certainly will count against Finney and Fox is just unrelenting. A couple of great shots. Down goes Finney again. Finney's shaking his head. And will Finney continue? Finney will continue. But that's the end of the round. And what a dominant display from, from, from Fox there. <laughs> the most promotion lad is certainly getting his head rattled tonight. I'm just looking at the poll there. There's a poll just come up there. Will Nathan Finney manage to get another belt for his collection tonight? And a yes, it's 71%, no, 28%. So far, he's been knocked down twice. Yep. So, do we anticipate that to happen again? It will certainly count back. against him. Absolutely will count against him. Wait a minute, oh, wait a minute. What's happened here? There may have been a... I'm not sure if it's a premature celebration or what. I think, I think, I think Finney's surrendered. It does look as though the fight's over. Yeah, look. He took a fair old bathroom there in that first round. And he went down twice. I think he's feeling he's just had enough. I'm just looking at Big Alec there, Alec Millen. Looking down in anticipation. But uh, you can see that he's saying, no, he's not going to fight anymore. Yeah, because those two, those two knockdowns absolutely rattled him. I, th I think he knows he's, he's out of his depth. I think he knows he's done. And it's such a shame, but... There's absolutely no shame in admitting defeat. There's no shame in stopping. But it is a shame that he won't be able to add another belt to his collection. That's a pity it went so quick because it's a much anticipated fight. We've had a few of the people in the chat there anticipating the fight, looking forward to it. That was kind of looking forward to myself because I thought with Finney there, he was getting a, a fair old a bit of support. And he, I thought he was going to lift another belt, but obviously not tonight, it's not to be. We're currently awaiting official certification. Finney's back on his feet. He's currently getting supported by the medic in the ring. But he's moving under his own power. And hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to Taylor Fox shortly. 
say. It'll be interesting what he's got to say. The reason why he pulled out the fight. Your new 76 kilo British champion Taylor Fox. What an absolute stunning performance in the first round. Uh, I want to say I knew, I knew I had a fight on my hands with Nathan. I fought them last year. We got uh, over three twos. We had a draw. Hard fight. I knew what I was coming in for the night. Unfortunately, it was the, the night got called short, but that's a game in it. Absolutely. Well, we see a rematch. If you want it, you can have it. Let's run it back again. Well, after such a dominating victory of that this lovely belt, who do you want to take on next? Anyone who's put in front of us, you tell us the name and I'll fight them. I certainly look forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, your new British 76 kilo cut champion, Taylor Fox. Well done, man.
Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with another uh, cruiserweight contest here between Ali and McLean. Ali is currently 4 and 0 oh from Peter Heads. McLean's one of Mullen Promotions' own from air. 2 and 1 is his current record. Ali will be wanting to continue that undefeated streak. But Ali doing well to dodge a few attacks there. A couple of good hooks going right in. McLean's being careful, but Ali's just going right in. McLean going a bit low, trying to get some, get some stomach shots. But Ali dodging a lot of the jabs. A great overhead there. McLean firing back. Missed that shot there. Going for the stomach, a, a couple more shots from Ali, trying to fight back. McLean with some jazz of his own, some great shots. Now McLean's almost in a corner, trying to back Ali into one. To extend him some shots. Ali, because of the height difference, he's trying to stay low. And McLean's going for some higher up shots. McLean almost trapped there, but... But McLean in the corner now. Very dangerous place to be, especially against a competitor like Ali. Again, McLean against the ropes in the corner. He needs to get away from there. against the ropes, McLean's getting a few shots in, now, Mc, uh, now McLean's backing away, exchanging a few shots, trying to get out of the way for most of them. Ali, Ali for a couple of great shots against the ropes there, McLean firing back, a great comeback from McLean there. Shot to the stomach, try to break through but misses, and that's the end of round one. A great early performance. It's kind of hard to pick which side to be on, I must admit. I'm just looking at his nickname and the glitch, and he's wearing the, the Kelly stripes, blue and white stripes. I wonder if he's a, a Kelly supporter. Gee, I wonder. <laughs> By the way, I hope you can give, give a message to our Tommy Graham over there at Maggie's Kitchen. No, the crew watching the, the fight here in the pub. Thank you very much, Tommy, for the live stream. You're some guy. Anyway, hope you're enjoying the fight over there, guys. As much as we're enjoying it, and Big Josh and all his commentary and some of the cracking. We quit and see you come to me. Keep joining in. <laughs> and we're seconds away from round two. We'll give some other shout outs in the, the, next, the, next, the next intermission. The back into the action we go, a couple of opening jabs from McLean, firing right in, but Ali is striking back, chasing McLean away. McLean on the defensive, but Ali's just firing right in. And Mc, but McLean's making a great comeback, both pretty even at the minute. Ali getting some hooks. McLean with a couple of body shots. Ali with an uppercut to his stomach. Missing an uppercut there. A couple of shots to the head from Ali. A few shots to the stomach from McLean, trying to hit the head but missing a few. Ali missed with a big uppercut. A couple of shots there to the head from McLean. Fantastic stuff. A couple of good combos from McLean. Having Ali against the ropes, but Ali's rebounding. Try to fight back. 
Not a good combo from McLean, but met with a hook to the head from Ali. Stiff left. Another missed uppercut. Uh, some more great shots to the head from McLean. Ali tried to get a few more shots to the stomach and a few uppercuts. He needs to preserve his uppercuts. They're very big power moves. He can't afford to miss them. But McLean, McLean going to the midsection. McLean with a couple more punches, a few more hits to the head into the upper midsection. The fans are getting really animated for this one. From, from Ali and I miss a wild swing. And McLean going to the midsection, getting some good hits in, getting him right up, rattled against the ropes. Ali doing his best to fight back. And that's round two, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty balanced, I must say. It's an even, it's an even fight. I can of tell the difference between the two, although Connor was on top for the first half of that, that bout there. He, he had, I'm going to call him the glitch, for some reason that's what he's called. He had a pin up again in the back of the ring there, but he came, Raheem came back, threw a couple of punches into his body and pushed Connor back again. So he took the second half of that bout, as far as I'm concerned. So it's easy pizza as far as the, the judges are concerned. I don't know about you, but I think the more technical fighter is probably Connor, whereas that sucker punch is just sitting there with Raheem. He could just swing one in there and knock him out. Absolutely. Well, I, must give, I, I must give some more shout-outs to some friends over in Parma Alley. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Hope you're all well. Shout-out to Lawrence in Canada, who's enjoying the boxing right now. And hopefully more shout-outs to come. But we're underway in the final round of this contest. Some shots to the summit from McLean. A couple of wild uppercuts from both of them. And McLean just going hell for leather. So Ali fighting back with fists of fury of his own. This is the type of action you want to see, one where you generally cannot pick which side you think is going to win. They're both fairly even. A missed uppercut there from Ali. He needs to be careful. Like I said, they're power moves. He needs to preserve them and make sure they count. McLean going for some stomach shots, they're locked up a bit. Oh, a cheeky shot to the head there. But they're back, back in the middle. A wild range of shots from both of them, locking up slightly again. You can tell both of them are absolutely knackered right now. But they're trying their best to keep this third round going and just swinging for the fences. The fans are very animated for this one. Once again, lock on the breakout. McLean with a few punches. Ali fired him with some of his own. But now McLean shot against the ropes. Ali gets some great shots to the head there, but McLean just fighting back now. Some good shots to the midsection, some shots to the head, some great hooks from both of them. It's like a game of knock him, sock him here. It's great. Another miss uppercut from Ali. But the, the, the exhaustion clearly got to both of them in that round. But a great display from both of them. It's very hard to pick a winner.
beat us and Boxy, we move to the judges' score counts. We have a unanimous decision in favor of your winner. In the red tag, No record, we finally met a speed bump, and that was yourself. An absolutely brilliant performance. Thank you, thank you very much. I, it was hard, but I needed it. I lost my last one. I was, I know, I know, I know. So I needed it. So, but it was a good fight, though. He got me a good shot. But I kept carrying on, good through. So, that's what it was. a very even fight, I must say. It was. But he couldn't, he couldn't hurt me with his punches. So, just the stamina. But like, really good fight for him. He's a good guy. Nice guy. But, I give everything I had. And everything I had was perfectly enough, but it was great to see you winning. Congratulations once again.
three, two in a row. Welcoming and introducing on my weights in the blue corner. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the current heavyweight district champion. Wearing the blue from the weight. Boxing out of the Scottish Martial Arts Centre. Ladies and gentlemen, your champion, Chad Riley. The blue welcoming on my left, the challenger. Boxing out of the red corner. Wearing well, both contenders in this fight have a very big following from the crowd. Both of them getting quite a warm reception. Now, McConnell's currently 2-0, fighting out of Mullen Promotions Gym. Uh, Jack Ryland's fighting out of uh, Scot Scottish Martial Arts in Stirling. And the match is now underway. Rylance, Lena and Heavy going straight on the offense. McConnell yet to get some hits, and Rylance goes straight for the stomach. A couple of shots, some, has, some missed, some connected from McConnell there. But they've locked up. And Rylance just hammering in. doing anything possible to keep his championship belt and he's put on a dominant performance very early on. But the McConnell's trapped in the corner there for a second there. Ryan's getting some great hits the, and once again going for the kidneys. Oh, the referee's paused it there for a second but they're back underway. Ryan's again on the offensive. Oh, and a wild hook there. I think he just skimmed him. McConnell doing his best to fight back, but nothing's really connecting or, or doing much damage. Rylands is just getting some fantastic shots to the head. More to the stomach there. McConnell missing some shots, some very vital shots, I must admit, and Ryland's coming in with more hammer fists. And clocking him right in the head, and again in the stomach. Ryland's is showing no mercy in this opening round. And has, has McConnell right on the ropes. Last round one, but Violence definitely has this, I think. Wow, so many punches there. I could feel them here and I'm about 15 feet away. The two boys really, really sitting on it. Some strong haymakers right into the side. You can feel the, the thud coming off the, the side of the body. I think it's kind of easy pizza. I think the two of them are kind of even in this fight so far. Although I do think that uh, possibly Jack, he's shown a bit more of the kind of movement around a bit of the ring. Uh, than the other, the other fighter, but you just never know, it's round one, round two can change it all, but it's, it can be tired with the heavyweight level, so it depends on how fit they are and how they can cope with the next couple of rounds. Absolutely, and I need to give a special shout out to Emma and John from Air who are chinning in tonight, hope you guys are enjoying the show, now getting ready for round two of this contest. Three rounds in this championship contest. And now we're underway. Ryan's getting the early shots in. McConnell trying to duck out of the way, but Ryan's is just firing away. I think McConnell's shown a bit more fire in this round. He's certainly, oh, he's gone a bit low there. <laughs> trying to ram him into the corner there. McConnell needs to be careful. But Ryan's is not happy about that. He's got great heavy hits. McConnell's ducking more of the attacks. Now, getting a few shots in. But another shot to the head from Rylands. McConnell's just absorbing the blows, but he's he's just getting abused by Jack Rylands, the champion.
the corner doing well to duck, an epic reversal of the uppercut. But McConnell get, McC more of McConnell's hats are connected and less of Rylance's are. But Rylance has McConnell against the goals, just wailing on him. You can, you can always see Violence smiling there. Again, has McConnell against the Royals, got a few shots in. Kind of goading him on a wee bit, sorry. <laughs> Again, McConnell against the Royals, got a few shots in. Oh, I think a couple more shots from Violence there. I thought McConnell was out of his feet for a second, but he's really struggling now. Violence is just not stopping, showing absolutely no mercy, no surrender from McConnell as well. Rylance misses a hook. Last round two. McConnell did well to make a comeback in that round, I must admit. Well, that was round two to Rylance for me. The punches were severe. I just think that uh, McConnell was taking far too much punishment. I think at one point I thought the referee was going to step in and say, you've taken too much punishment there. You had him against the ring and there were some real jabs and once or twice caught him on the side of the jaw. I thought he was going to get down at one point. Certainly this third round, if, if, to me if Rylance has got the energy, which I think he has, he can either knock him out at this one, or he'll win in, he'll win in points. I absolutely have to agree on that. that, that was just utter annihilation from Rylance, but McConnell is showing signs of life, he almost went down, but he has the potential to make a comeback, but it's a matter of whether or not it's a little bit too late. I think it's too late, I think Rylance will probably He'll step it up again and get a few more punches and get the points. If he doesn't knock him out, and take the, take the bout. Absolutely, I agree on that one. But now it's round three underway in this championship bout. The champion absolutely well the contender, but the contender's fighting back a little bit. Try to get some, both of them try to get some combos in, but not really succeeding. Some great shots to the body. McConnell tried to trap him in the corner, but Rylance is having none of that. More great shots to the body, ducking a lot of McConnell's hits. But McConnell tried to go, try to stay low as much as he can, but Rylance is still counting in a lot of it. Body shots from Rylance. Rylance seems to be a lot more agile. Another clocking in the face. A couple of missed swings there. But trapped in the neutral corner there. Another shot to the head. At this point, McConnell's just trying his best to stay in the game and not get knocked out. But it's very clear to me that Ryan's is winning on points. And it's just what a fantastic combination to the body and the head from Ryan's. And McConnell's down. The referee's counting him. Look, he's won in the title, that's it! Ryan's remains your champion. Yeah, that's predicted, I think. Taking far too much punishment, far too many punches. I thought in the second round he was going to get down. But obviously there he just tired and felt the punches. And Rylance did have the energy to pile on the punches and take the energy out of him. McConnell, good fighter, but to me Rylance is he's more technical. And also he's, a lot of his punches were, were meeting the face and meeting the side, taking the energy out of McConnell. I thought it was a really good fight, but to me Rylance, from the, from the get-go, was the person going to win that one. I could not agree more, Eddie. What a fantastic fight and a brilliant championship defence from Jack Rylands, who we'll hopefully hear from shortly.
Well, there's a reason why the, you're the champion. That was an absolute mugging, absolute brilliant performance. Thank you, yeah. I've been training really hard, and yeah, that's what I came to do. Been here, they come here today to win the session. I want to dominate them. Absolutely. Well, who would you like to see step up next for this nice piece of brass? Well, I was planning on moving down a weight class. There's one person I'd want to fight at heavyweight. His name is... Oh, yeah. oh, his name is fucking huge. <laughs> Blind my mind, but there's one person I want to fight a heavyweight, and if I get him, I'll stay a heavyweight. But other than that, I'm going down. Well, hopefully, you remember his name, and hopefully, we get to see that fight. Yeah. But once again, congratulations! Brilliant, brilliant match. There you are, Jack Rylance, ladies and gentlemen. Jordan does know how to sort of stuff. But he's one of Mullen Promotions own. He's got a 5-0 and undefeated streak. And he's the reigning champion. And he's right, he's, he's a killer lad as well. So he's got a big strong following here against the, the Glaswegian uh, Cameron Ritchie. He's currently 2-1. and one. But oh, <laughs> Hunter tried to go low, but Ritchie is just like a feral cat, just firing right back, taking none of it. Hunter was a wee bit 
Cork early. Oh, he's tripped up there. Oh. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. He's injured. He's injured. Oh, he may have winded himself. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. No, that's it, that's it, I think. That, that was completely unexpected. I mean, Hunter was, he was uh, the favourite for this fight. And a big support as well, really disappointed support. I think it, I think it may have caught him right in the solar plexus with one of the shots. Yeah, you can see it. he's held himself down there. He put his hand up to the side of his stomach. I was confused there whether it was his stomach or whether it was his hand that maybe jarred. And yeah. Maybe he twisted his wrist. We should find out. You'll see Alec and that down there and a wee look at see what kind of damage has been done. Yeah, but immediately a lot of people rushed to ringside to the red corner to Jim Ross over there got kind of got smacked. But everyone's checking on Jordan right now. Hopefully he's not hurt too bad. But this was not something I expected to happen in this championship match, but boxing is a very unpredictable sport, I must say. I expected it to go all the way. And Jordan Hunter having that big following that he's got here to actually produce a, a, a fight and take the title. But and it's not to be. The doctor's in there just now with them, having a good look and checking him over. Hopefully he's OK. I hope it's just uh, one of those sort of slips. And uh, maybe something, no, your doctor's holding his rib. Maybe somebody, a wee slap, but that's about it. But I felt that the fight for the first 30 seconds or so there, the two of them went awful fast at it, very quick. And I think Jordan slipped. And if I remember right, I'm going to look at my phone and, and maybe replay a wee bit to the YouTube channel and have a wee look and see what happened. But I think he slipped and he just took it. He took it from the side, I think. Well, they're hugging it out in the ring just now. We're going to get the referee officially declaring it. Alex currently talking to the medic, Alec Mullen, the promoter and owner of Ball Promotions Gym. But a great display of sportsmanship from champion and contender. Well, champion and former champion, I must say, uh, should I say, but... Jordan definitely seems to be upset to have lost, but in such, in such fashion, but nonetheless, we're going to get the official Switching of the championship right now and with the referee declaring it. <laughs> Fastest match of the night. Performance there, very, very dominant early on. Yeah, uh, thanks very much. I just first off, I want to say a big shout out to Alex, my coach, everybody involved tonight. Uh, as the fight goes, man, I prepared really well. Uh, a lot more running, a lot more sparring. We've, we've got a new unit at the team, at the gym, so the training's been three nights a week, flying, running, all of this. Uh, uh, I couldn't have prepared any better for this. Uh, I can work and see if I do jobs, man. I had to, I shouldn't be fighting that way. He stepped up a bit. He's made it, he's made it to me, but he stepped up a big bit of weight. He's made it really nice. But, I, I'm happy with my performance because usually I run out like a bull and my 30 seconds I'm gone, I was still calm. So I, I'm happy I'm improving that department, being relaxed and doing my thing. Well, you've, you've defeated his undefeated streak with yeah. the 5-0, oh, it's now 5-1. and one. He seemed a bit cocky early on and he got a cheeky jab in, but you were having none of it. No, well, I knew he was thinking I'm going to start fast because that's my style. I thought, no, 
Be patient with it. There's no rush. Clean shots are better than shots to the arms and all that, so be patient with it. I, wa I watched his last couple of fights, going over his style. I knew things he'd done, but I kind of capitalised. Obviously, it didn't go that long. I couldn't really, I couldn't really, really show you how much I've, I've improved, but yeah, yeah it's very happy. Well, what happened? I knew. <laughs> I knew you. So what happened when, when uh, Jordan went down? What happened? It was uh, a body shot. He bent over and uh, I let go for the body and the uppercut, but I got the body shot and then he moved again, but he, he turned his back and then I, 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 I don't know, I, didn't, I thought I hurt his arm or something. I need to watch it back, honestly. Yeah, we'll need to get some replays, but you're the new champion. Who do you want to see step up to you? Uh, well, we've got a fight in three weeks in back in Glasgow. Uh, so once we get finished that, we'll see what happens. One step at a time, see what happens. Well, I certainly look forward to seeing your next fights, but once the congratulations, well done. Big respect to you. I've watched uh, all the old videos and I love the commentary. I love what you're doing. Love it, man. Thank you, man. certainly enjoy themselves in anticipation for the main event. Two behemoths, and I guarantee you this is going to be a match of the night. 
It's going to be one of the heaviest high contests we've seen in a long time. Yeah, it's going to be. I'm just looking at you. Don't need a, you don't need these cameras anymore. A smartphone heaven in here. Everybody, everybody's taking a picture. <laughs> we should, maybe we should hire them, Josh. <laughs> Desperate to take a picture rather than loving the moment. <laughs> He's a local one. I do fancy Cree, I think. I've seen, I, I think I've seen him before fight in one of the, the fights during the air race course. Yep, so, he, won, he won the championship at the, the, the air course. That's where I've seen him get. So oh, oh, it, 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 Dale's going firing right out of the gate with some phenomenal combinations. And Greg's fighting back well on his own, taking none of it. This is, that, this is a brilliant brawl already. I'm loving it. We're, we're barely 10, 20 seconds in, and they're already absolutely murdering each other. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a couple of gladiators in there having a go. But again, that's Cree getting pinned into the corner. Very enthusiastic pair of fighters. And obviously this vacant title, they want to get it. Exactly, and they're fighting like a bunch of feral cats. Absolutely, they're giving absolutely nothing. Make sure there's no openings for each other. But Gren's hammering in right now. Cree's trying to fight back. But Gren's against the corner, against the ropes now. He needs to be careful. Getting a good couple of connections there. Cree doing his best to dodge. A couple of shots to the kidneys from Cree, from uh, Gren, sorry. But a great shot to the stomach from Cree there. And Cree's just wailing on him now. Some great hammer fists. Fans are very, very involved in the Masters. Excited beyond belief. Kreese didn't well to defend himself from those shots. He try to fight back. We're both exchanging great hits here. Kreese managed to duck a few good hits. A great hook there from Kreese to, to, to Gren. Gren trying to get some body shots, a couple of uppercuts. But Cree's doing well to protect himself. And that's round one. What a brilliant first round. It's a great fight. Both really going for it. It's uh, half and half. I, I, I couldn't say just now who's who. Although I did say it, Cree did catch him once or twice. With, uh, two haymakers to the side of the head. And I thought, no, oh, that, that, you can see his face. He, he, he took a, a hit there. But in saying that, he came back, Green came back in there, he gave, it, he gave back what he gave, he took in. I don't know what's going to happen with this fight, I think the two of them are so well matched, they're so even. Being a local lad, maybe I'll go for three. I voted for three here, so we'll see. Well, Cree's currently winning in the polls in the comment section on our live stream, but I have to say, I think Gren may have slightly edged it in that first round. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think Green edged it. <laughs> so, let's see where this mount goes. Well, round two is about to be underway. Bell rings, and both of them going after each other. Good hits, just scuffling with each other. Some wild swings from Cree. Gren trying to be a bit more technical in his approach. Getting some great ducks, some great punches, just not stopping at all on Cree. Cree's doing well to defend himself, but a lot of the hits are still getting through. Missed a, a wild swing there. Shot 
to the kidney from Gren. Creed ducking as much as he can. A couple of good shots there from both of them. Trying, Gren trying to make an advance. Creed defending himself. More great shots to the stomach from Gren. A powerful hook there. Neither men are letting up, but Gren, I think, is currently in the lead. He's getting some phenomenal body shots on Creed here. Thomas Gren is just not stopping. I'm just so enthralled in the action right now. This is brilliant stuff. They're both trying to really dodge each other's moves. Gren trapping Cree against the ropes. Getting a few great shots in, but this isn't. We, you would never have thought Cree would be dominated in such a way by Thomas Gren. You'd never, you'd never expect to see Cree getting dominated by anyone, but this is a, this is brutal. Yeah, I do think Gren is starting to go on top of it now, showing a lot of energy and a lot of punches to the body and, and force them back. But here's Cree again. He's starting to come back into the fight. It seems to me one person has a goal, the other person has a goal. The energy levels, Josh, are unbelievable in that ring. Oh, absolutely, and the crowd are, are matching it <laughs> with such phenomenal support for both fighters, especially Cree. But we're, we're now approaching the central round of this five-bout five -bout contest. Missing a few there from both of them. But Gren has Cree against, almost against the corner. Cree getting some decent body shots in. But they've locked up a bit, the referee might need to break them apart. Gren just, just barring in. Cree tries to dodge. A wild swing and miss there. Glenn's just not letting up. He's getting some fantastic shots in from all angles. He's a very well-rounded competitor as Glenn. Same be can be said for Cree, but Cree isn't showing off exactly what he can do. He is a great fighter, but he's been severely overwhelmed by the Polish hammer fist that is Thomas Glenn. Gren with more uppercuts to the body and hooks to the head. Ducking a lot of Cree's offense. More shots to the midsection. Cree trying to get a few hooks in to try and bring back some balance to the match. But Gren, Gren's dominating this. apologise for the silence, I'm quite enthralled in this. Gren's just not letting up. Kree's get, trying to get a few good shots in. The fans are very animated. They're up in their feet. They're around the ringside. And that's the bell. Hey, what a fight, Josh. What a fight. The energy levels are extremely high, but you can see they're tired. This is when the endurance training comes in now. They've got to go another two rounds and find that something else to, to win the fight. My feeling is, watching the fight so far, Cree, I think he's starting to feel a bit now. He's starting to feel a, the tire. His, his legs are starting to go a wee bit. I think uh, with Gren coming in there a few times, especially when his legs were buckling, 
they hit him a couple of times and it took him a wee bit longer to get back up and get his posture back again to fight. Again, as I say, it's down to endurance now. I just don't know. They kind of keep that kind of level up for the next two rounds, surely. Oh, second away, seconds away from round four. And we're going three tight again early. If I try to go low. I think Cree got a bit of a wake-up call from Alec from Mullen Promotions Gym. Cree's in severe danger of losing his championship, to, losing the championship match tonight. Glenn getting more shots to the stomach and to the head. He's absorbing a lot of that. It's a time out there. He's telling people to get away from ringside. We need to be careful, they don't want to get hit in the action. But nonetheless, the action continues. Glenn just dominating Cree here. Cree's trying his best to hang on. And as Eddie said, the endurance training comes in here. They, they both really need to display their conditioning. But Dale's starting to exhaust himself. He's, he's absorbed a lot of heavy hits, a lot of very severe blows, and, and Glenn is just not letting up. Glenn getting a couple of jabs in. Tree, tree, tree sorry, getting some jabs in. Glenn doing his best to duck them, but he's getting some more shots into the stomach. Some great body shots. Uh, oh, a wild swing to the head there. I think it just skimmed him from Glenn. Oh, almost hugging there, I think. Oh, wait a minute. He's trying his best to hold on, but the, the referee stops it there. Great shot to the head from Glenn. And that's round four. <laughs> I, there's, I don't think there's any coming back for Cree. No, I don't think so. I think that that round there was definitely Glenn's. If you had him pinned back quite a number of times, there were some few a few rallies pull Cree back. A couple they actually connected. And you can see Cree losing that balance again, falling back again and losing it. I just wonder where he's, whether he's going to have the energy to get back through this fifth round and the final round. Gren seems to have that something extra. That kind of endurance is in there. It's staying for the fight. But you never know, I mean, is this, is this a tactic? Does, is Cree holding back so he could win in the fifth round and then pull in a sucker punch or something, pull it back again and go for, go for a points win? Who knows? Well, now we're approaching our final round of this championship contest for the vacant 76 kilo Scottish title. A couple of straight shots before the bell, but nonetheless, if he's allowing it. Seeing Gren swinging wildly, Gren getting some shots to the body. They've locked up a bit. A wild shot to the head from Cree. And now we're seeing the Dale Cree that we're used to. He's bringing a bit more uh, aggression out in his act, but, but at the same time, Gren, Gren's just not, not letting up. He's, he's not easing up. He wants that championship badly. He does not want another belt getting added to the collection of Dale Cree, the nightmare that he is. Glenn continues, more wild swings, some connecting, some not to the head and the stomach. A couple of jabs. Got a bit of a Thomas chant there. Three against the ropes, come back out now. They're both firing in. Wild swing there, but Cree manages to get out of the way. Anytime Cree tries to go for a 
for an upper shot. He, 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 he just ducks. Green just ducks him. Again, Crease against the ropes. Back in, towards the corner now. Green getting fantastic shots to the cranium. A couple of great haymakers. They've locked up. The referee might need to break that. They do it themselves. Crease trying to get some last second points. But we're in the final 10 seconds of the match, and I genuinely think there's no chance Cree can bring this back. Unless he gets a knockout right now, there is no way. Like, I think Glenn definitely has this. Absolutely. And the match is just about to end. A couple of last second punches. Yeah, I think it's Glenn that's taking that one. You can see his relentless punching all the time. Cree was taking a hell of a lot of punch punishment. In fairness to him, in second round, third round, I thought, he, yeah, he was picking up, he's doing really well. But that fourth and fifth round, definitely, that was uh, Green. To me, he's took the title. Well, before the show, as I mentioned earlier, I get notes from Alec on all the different uh, fighters, and he said this main event was going to be a very heavy hitting 50 50 match. It was very about to be heavy hitting, but was, I don't think that was 50 50. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't 50 50. I'd say it was. Uh, Maybe 70 30 more <laughs> in, in favour to the for Gren. I mean, if I was a judge there, I mean, the, the punches, how can you count the punches? They were relentless. It was constant punching from both fighters for the first three rounds. And then to me, it was more constant coming from Gren in the, in the fourth and the fifth round. Cray was just taking a lot of punishment. I actually thought he was going to go down at one point because he, his endurance and his, his energy must, levels must have just tired. You can see him there just now, Josh, he's starting to, he's hanging a bit. That was a hard fight for him, that was a really hard fight. domination well done Thomas thank you thank you hard training just for you now well a lot of people are generally afraid of a fight like Dale Creek because he's an absolute beast in the ring but you you just it was like water off a duck's back you had no problem because I really want that I really want that so well who do you want to see step up for it uh, what do you say who, who do you want to see fight you for we it have three weeks ago with a rematch with the same guy Right. Yeah, but depends. Everything go right. I feel good. I I feel very good. Oh no, Dave, you've just won the belt. I, <laughs> so now some celebrate. Maybe in the McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. That was an absolute murder. Once again, Thomas Mama, Green, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I, of course. <laughs> and. Uh, well, we're, we're joined by Alec Mullen, promoter. Alec Mullen, what a show tonight. Oh, brilliant show. Uh, obviously, we didn't get as much wins as we thought we were going to, but with a show, take my hat off to all the, all the fighters that stepped in tonight. Uh, some of the away fighters as well, they put on a show. I'm cracking bouts. Uh, we had a couple of big wins tonight. Molly McDonald, big Alistair Flew with a knockout. Mm. Connor, uh, Connor McLean beating Raheem Ali. Good wins, but our title fights didn't go didn't he, uh, go your way tonight but that's just boxing and yeah. a couple of them will be getting rematches the boys will get back in the gym and we'll go again I certainly look forward to it so yeah. we're, uh, 
Because we'll come out, well, Richie and myself and Eddie on commentary, we, we couldn't exactly pin down what happened to George and Hunter. Can you offer an explanation? Body shot. It was a body shot. A body it, was body shot. it was all marked up on the side here. All oh, right. Uh, Cammy's, a, Cammy's a good boy. Trained by Paul Fells. Good trainer. Cammy used to come down to Sparta gym and that. Uh, Jordan is a, is an ex. Jordan actually fights at 62, 63 kilo, and that was a 67 kilo belt. He won it a couple of months ago off the champ. He, he beat the champion. He stepped up, mate. Uh, it's a last minute fight, and he won it. And he wanted to defend it. But he'll be stepping back down to his aim, mate. Now, Jordan's a good lad. Just, boy, he was big cam. He was too strong. Too strong. Was somebody shot. He can't take that away from him. Ah, he was a bit, was a bit cocky shot. early on. Ah, was, that's just Jordan. That's ah, just his personality. That's, that's yeah, what yeah, he yeah, yeah, uh, Jordan, will, Jordan will go again. So will Dale, Nathan, uh, Taylor Fox. What a monster that fighter. Body oh, shot. Uh, the, 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 I, I certainly wasn't expecting oh, Nathan Finney or Dale because he get dominated like that. No, no. The, the, talk, I actually thought the first couple of rounds Dale was landing the, the bigger punches, but thought, as you've seen for five rounds, Thomas didn't stop punching. Mm. That won him the fight, obviously. But I don't think a lot of his punches were doing a lot to deal, but it was a big work mate, and he's winning, he's winning the rounds, so yeah. we, we'll get back to the drawing, but we've got the rematch on uh, his coach, uh, Ziggy's show on the 13th of April. Uh, the Archers in Glasgow, so we'll, Dale will be back in the gym and we'll get ready for that. That'll be another, that'll be another crack and fight that. But well, uh, well done to all the new champions tonight and well done to Thomas Green. They deserve that. Well done. Absolutely. So so when will we likely see another Mullen Promotions show? I've, I've, I'm, usually, I'm usually really organised with shows. I usually get them booked out all year and all that. But uh, probably summertime, you're maybe talking about September. Have we either been here? Or, uh, the, me well, the show was supposed to be the Metro Nightclub. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, but just due to them opening and license and, and stuff like that, uh, we had to we had to change venue. Uh, but they're going to be having a meeting soon, and that we're going to set a date for the Metro uh, summertime, and then we'll probably be back here at the Park Hotel or the race course then near, near the end of the year. Good, good. Mm -hmm. well, I certainly look forward to it. But, uh, but Alec, Alec, thanks once again for a fantastic thanks, night thanks at again. Thanks a lot. I uh, really appreciate everything you do on the shows. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure to uh, do it. But ladies and gentlemen, that's it for pugilism at the park here at the Park Hotel in Kilmarnock. It's been a phenomenal night. Thanks once again to Alec, everyone from Mullen Promotions Gym and all the fighters who participated tonight and of course everyone who watched the fantastic show. Hopefully we'll join you see us again soon but other than that, good night, thank you and hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>